Brothers can lead us. Just the brothers. Just the brothers. Say falling in love. It's all right, brothers. Say falling. Come on. Do I have any brothers that love Jesus this morning? Come on. Just lift your hands with us. With Jesus. Tell them, brothers. Was the best thing I've ever, ever done. Come on, sisters. Come on, sisters. Come on, sing to them this morning, y'all. Falling in love. Tell them, sisters.
said we worship you, said we need you, falling in love with Jesus, was the best, was the best. open your mouth this morning if you love him come on if you're in love with Jesus this morning open your mouth come on let's glorify him this morning come on if you love Jesus this morning come on everybody that loves him this morning come on if you love him this morning open your mouth and let him know how much you love him let him know that it's the best thing you've ever done Come on, let him know that's the best thing I've ever done. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. Open your mouth. Hallelujah. Come on, was it the best thing you've ever done? Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, hallelujah. Come on and worship him because you love him this morning. Not just because what he can do for you. But because you love him, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Does anybody love Jesus this morning? I said, does anybody love Jesus this morning? Does anybody love Jesus this morning? Come on, if you love Jesus, you ought to give him a praise. Hallelujah. Come on, if you love Jesus this morning, you ought to give him a praise. You want to let him know that you love him, hallelujah. That you appreciate him for everything he's done for you. If you love him, open your mouth and give him glory this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's give the Lord another praise because he's wonderful. Ah, yes, Lord. Falling in love with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's the best thing. Thank you, Lord. I said it's the best thing I've ever done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love my wife. Amen. I love my wife. I love my children. But falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. I said falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Thank you, Lord. No amount of money. No fame or fortune. Hallelujah. But to be in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Amen. We're going to ask everyone to stand on their feet this morning. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In his arms, I feel protected. Safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Thank you, Lord. Never disconnected. Amen. We're going to get ready to go before the Lord in prayer. We're going to ask Evangelist Shonetta Ferguson if she would come with our scripture. Amen. And she will be followed with prayer by Evangelist Brunson in that order. Scripture reading will be found this morning in the book of Psalms. In the 91st chapter. And we are going to read the chapter in its entirety responsively. I read the first, you read the second, so on and so forth. And when you have it, say amen. amen. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence.
Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt, shalt thou trample under feet. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And verse 16 all together, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. like to come around the altar. You can gather around the altar. Hallelujah. This is where we can make our request known to a God who answers. A God who's able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that we could ask or think. God who can do anything but fail. A God who is moved by our faith. Hallelujah. Every head bow. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the stay. Lord, we come to you asking you to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, God, we're asking you to make us meet for your use. God, we praise you. Oh, God, there is no God like our God, and we give you thanks for that. We come to you just to tell you we love you. We know you set your love on us. We come to tell you that we love you. We've come to tell you thank you. You didn't have to bring down our high places. You didn't have to heal our bodies. You didn't have to bring us through the storm. But you did it, Lord, and we, we thank you for it. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We're asking you right now to take us forth, Lord. Make us meet for your use. Help us to be the vessels you've called us to be. Help us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify you. Oh, God, send your word on this morning. Help it to fall on good ground, Jesus. You know what we have need of. Before we even ask God, we're asking you to just do it. We come to you in faith. Hallelujah, faith, hallelujah. Cha -cha. Oh, God, we know that you move by our faith. Oh, God, see our faith and move. See our faith and open doors. See our faith and bring down high places, Jesus. Let your will be done in our lives. And help us to say yes to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise as we go back to our seats. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's give the Lord praise. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on, I, I can't hear you. Let's give the Lord a praise if he's worthy. If you believe he's able to answer the prayers that you just prayed. Come on, let's give him worship. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him worship. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Man, the presence of the Lord is in here this morning. Hallelujah. I know we had to come through some weather to get here. But since we're here, we may as well glorify the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I said since we're here, we may as well praise and glorify the Lord. Why come through all that snow, danger seen and unseen, and then get to the house of the Lord and not give him praise? Come on, let's give the Lord glory on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Man, he's worthy. At this time, we're going to ask all of our visitors, first-time visitors, amen, if this is your first time here, we're going to ask that you would stand at this time so that we can acknowledge, so that we can acknowledge you this morning. 
Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise for our visitor, our first-time visitor. Let's give the Lord a praise. Come on, Clinton Street. Let's give him a warm welcome. Amen. Amen. All visitors, all visitors, whether or not this is your first time, whether or not this is your first time, you may have been here before, but you are not a member at Clinton Street Greater Bethlehem Temple Church. Amen. We ask that you would stand so that we can acknowledge you as well. All visitors, all visitors, all visitors, all visitors, all visitors. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise. We've got another visitor. All right. That was just okay. Let's give the Lord a praise for our visitor. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We certainly, on behalf of our pastor, Bishop Cedric Clark, his wife, Dr. Sandra Clark, and the entire Clinton Street Greater Bethlehem Temple Church, Amen. We certainly want to welcome you, welcome you to our services. We are honored and elated, amen, that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. So many places you could have gone, amen, but you chose to be with us, amen. And certainly we thank the Lord for you and for you choosing to be here on this morning. Let's give the visitors another hand. Amen. God bless you and we love you in Jesus' name. We're going to ask all of the children, all of our children, man, this is something that our pastor has implemented, something very near and dear to his heart and near and dear to our hearts as well. We're going to ask all children, ages five all the way up through college, children, teenagers, young adults, adolescent, whatever you call yourself, man, if you are in school, man, we ask that you would stand on this morning. We are going to ask Minister Bryce Brunson if he would come and offer prayer this morning for our children. Every head bow. Lord God, we thank you for coming together one more time. Bless our minds, bless our spirits, bless our souls, Father. Lord, Father, we're asking you, God, right now, let your will be accomplished in the young people's lives right now. Truly, there's a great falling away, Father. We're asking you, Father, help us to stand in the midst of darkness, Father. Uh, see that sin hill that cannot be hid. Bless the administrators in a special way, Father. Lord, Father, help us to walk in your ways, Father, to refrain our foot from their path. And, Father, we have to ask these things in your blessed name. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise for our youth, our young children. Amen. Amen. All right, it's time for our congregational song. We're going to ask, amen, that you would get your bulletins, amen, that you would get your bulletins in your hand and stand to your feet this morning, that you would stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Amen, stand to your feet. If you don't have, if you see someone standing next to you, especially a visitor that doesn't have a bulletin, I'm going to ask that you would share share your bulletin also this is a partition a participation part of the service amen so we're going to ask that you would participate that you would sing along and that you would clap your hands amen that you would clap your hands we're going to be led in this congregational song by evangelist stephanie harvin in jesus name Love. 
make me down here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 In my heart. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Come on, reach way down. something for. Stand if he never did nothing for you. Raise your hand high. Jump. Now since we got that clear all that he has done something for him I want you to give him the highest praise that you can give him. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. I want 
you to give him a praise and stand on your feet and give him a praise. Oh, you could do better than that. The word of the Lord said he dwells in the midst of what? How many want him in this place? Then you better act like you want him in here. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're very thankful to the Lord. And you may be seated. You may be seated. It means something to be a praiser. You, I don't want you just to praise the Lord when you come in here. When you walk down the street. Every time you pass somebody and they didn't slap you. They didn't cuss you out. You ought to say, thank you, Jesus. When you get home and your house haven't been broken into, what you going to say? When you get home and didn't have an accident, in, in, in the snow and you didn't have a wreck, so you should be praising the Lord all the time. How many have a job? Thank you, Jesus. There's something about giving God praise. The last few days have been pretty rough. I, I went to three funerals yesterday, and I had to speak at two. They wanted me to say something. But what do you say? You've got to give God praise. We, we, this morning, we're going to have two speakers, two young men. I believe they're well able to do the job. The first speaker will be Minister Rondell Hook, sir, and Minister Porter. Mm -hmm. Now, don't, don't, don't say nothing. Listen. Don't make no conclusion, just listen. And I guarantee you, you get something. Now what you gonna say? Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. All right, that sounds a little bit weak. I, I gotta I got I to gotta admit that uh, we came to, the, to church to praise the Lord, right? Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, what you going to praise him with? Praise the Lord, everybody. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I won't be before you long at all. There's uh, my good friend and my brother. We'll bring up the end so he, I can just open it up and just give it over to him. He's, uh, he's, <laughs> which I thank God for. He's, uh, he's a good friend, even though this is not about him. But since he's going to preach uh, behind me, I, I, I've learned from some of the elders back here that you just open the door and get out the way. So I'm going to open the door and just get out the way. But I just want to say, um, praise the Lord once again. Once again, thank God for being here. Thank God for my life, my health, and my strength uh, to uh, the Spirit of God, to his son, Jesus Christ, uh, even to my pastor giving me this privilege to speak on Sunday morning. This is his desk, so, you know, I take it as, as an honor that he's uh, opened up the, uh, the pulpit for me to come up here and preach. Um, also, I thank God for my wife. I see her right there. There we go. I thank God for my beautiful wife. Um, Y'all can do a little better than that. I, it's okay. Uh, my beautiful wife. My beautiful wife. She's been, uh, she's, been my, she's been everything to me. You know, we have our fourth child, uh, my, my daughter, my glory, I, as I can say it like that. And I just thank God for what she's done. She's uh, showed, you know, tremendous strength throughout, throughout uh, you know, her motherhood. And I've taken, you know, note of the power of a woman. I've, I've, took, I've took a note of that. So I just thank God for my wife once again. Um, to the word of the Lord, to the word of the Lord. 
Uh, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. Uh, and let's read verse 4. Verse 4 through 5. When you have it, say amen. I believe the scripture is fitting. Uh, just, you know, we're having this storm outside. The snow is here. And sometimes it turns into a press to make it out to the house of God. So let's, uh, let's move forward. And verse 4 says, and when they could not come, not. Nah, we can all read together. Let's start that again. Everybody together. And when we come nigh for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5, and when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto them, palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Let's read verse 5 one more time. And when he saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. All right. So tonight, or today rather, I want to speak on, on priorities. Priorities, priorities, priorities. Um, throughout this uh, consecration month, uh, I, must be, I must admit that the Lord has been dealing with me uh, as a leader as far as acknowledging his presence. You know, acknowledging the presence of God and how great his power is. You know, uh, sometimes, um, you know, because of the world... The world system, it can sometimes beat us down and sometimes we'll give more uh, credence or more honor to the world system and how it beats us down. Uh, matter of fact, you can kind of look at some of our faces. We've been through a long week. It's been a long week for some of us and we've come to the house of God with some of those burdens. You know, we've come to the house of God with, with those burdens in mind and it causes us to, to sit down and kind of hold our hands together and sometimes put our hands under our, under our legs, so to speak. But when you understand that how great your God is, or how great and how powerful and how magnificent he is, there's no reason why you should hold back your praise. There's no reason why you should hold back your hallelujah or your hand clap. Uh, the Bible says to us, uh, I believe it's, uh, I believe it's uh, 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 Psalms chapter 24. Uh, David said it like this. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be what? Be he lifted up, you what? Everlasting door. And the Bible says, and the king of glory shall come in. And then he asks this question. He says, who is the king of glory? Which is very funny that he asks the question of who is the king of glory because he knew who the king of glory was. Well, he answered himself and he said, he is the Lord God strong. Now listen to how he said it. I like the way that David puts it out there. He says strong and then he says and mighty. He didn't stop at the word strong because if he stopped at the word strong, brothers and sisters, some of us can be on God's level. I, I, I believe I'm strong. I, I lift weights every once in a while. And, and if I ever got into a bad situation, I believe my strength could bring me out of it. Uh, but brothers and sisters, David took it a little bit further and said he's mighty. Now, the word mighty doesn't consist of just strength, but it consists of continual strength. God is continually strong. Now, brothers and sisters, some of you all are looking at me like, well, what are you talking about? Well, y'all remember when we got down to Egypt, Moses, God told Moses to go what? Go down to Egypt and do what? He said, tell Pharaoh to let my people what? Go. He said, go tell him to let my people go. But the Bible says to us that when, Pharaoh, when Moses got down to Pharaoh, the Bible says that, that Pharaoh laughed and mocked him. The Bible says that he said, well, I'm not letting these people go. I don't know who your God is and what you've been on and what you've been sipping, Moses, but I'm going to let you know, you know the gods of Egypt. Uh, we're great. We're powerful. We're mighty. And the Bible says to us, the Bible says to us that God told Moses, he said, use what's in your hand. God gave him the staff. God gave him the powerful staff. The Bible says that he threw his staff down, threw his staff down. Y'all remember the story, right? If you don't remember the story, you remember the movie. The Bible says that he threw his staff down. And when he threw the staff down, the Bible says it did what? It turned into a serpent. Turned into a serpent, brothers and sisters. But, 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 but Egypt showed its strength too. The Bible says to us that he got called his magic men, his magicians, and called them out. He said, hey, hey, what you're doing, Moses, I can do too. The Bible says that he threw out his staff and two serpents came up. And the Bible says that these serpents were the same size as Moses' serpents. And the Bible says to us that the might of God showed itself strong. The might of God was this, that even though the world presents the same size, but my God can swallow up anything that the world brings. Even though the world presents strong, but my God is continually mighty and strong. 
So David understood the fact that he said, who is the king of glory? He's the Lord God strong and mighty. So we get back to our text. The Bible says in Mark chapter 2 and verse, I believe it's 5. It said that they came in and they ripped the roof off the house. And the Bible says that the priorities of these men were to come in and just test Jesus' strength. They wanted to know. They wanted to know. They said, Lord, just heal me of my sickness. Heal me of my problems. But the Bible says to us in the second verse, he said, when he seen their faith, everybody say faith. When he seen their faith, the Bible says he looked past their problems and seen the real situation, which was the priority of Jesus Christ. That is to heal you of your sin sick disease. It's easy for us to be healed from a broken arm. And it's easy for us to be healed from a heart problem. But at the end of the day, my soul got to be saved. That's the priority. Jesus went past the issue and he got straight to the priority. The priority is simply that our souls need to be saved. When my soul is saved, brothers and sisters, when my soul is saved, when the main priority is presented, guess what? All of my other issues don't matter. That's the reason why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And he said, all these other things will be added unto you. Seek the priority. Come on, let's put our hands together. 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 Come on, you can do better than that. Let's put our hands together. God is a good God. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Preacher talked about priorities. Preacher talked about priorities, and I too will talk about priorities on today. Priorities, priorities. Scripture's already been read, but we understand that according to Mark chapter 2, the scripture says that, that, that four men brought this paralytic man to Jesus. And I'll tell you right now, if you don't know it, everybody needs friends that can bring them to Jesus. Everybody needs some friends that can bring them to Jesus. I don't know about you, but, but, but if your friends aren't turning you to Jesus, you need to check your circle. If your friends aren't turning you to Jesus, if the advice they give you doesn't point you to the direction of Jesus, you may think about changing your circles. All too often we have friends that turn us the other way. These four friends, I could see it in my mind, they, 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 they picked up this man and they carried him to Jesus. When they got to the house, the scripture said that the house was full. There were people arguably in the house that probably shouldn't have been in the house. And I can see this man thinking, hold on, I'm the one in need and... All of you all are in the house, but, but I've got the real need. But that did not deter them from getting what they need from Jesus. Somebody say priority. Priorities are important. That means that I do one thing over the other. That means that I am preferential. Instead of doing thing A, I choose to do thing B. Priorities matter. Somebody say priorities matter. Oh, yes, they matter. You don't believe it until you've been in a place where you had to make one decision over the other. It doesn't mean that that thing that you had to choose wasn't important, but it's not as important as the next thing. Do you understand this concept of priority? I will tell you, my friend, Jesus is a savior that deals with us in order of priority. You don't know how, how, how bad it is to deal with people and associates who don't live life with priority. Everybody, you've had those friends before. You've had those friends. The moment they get paid, what do they do? They go spend all their money. They're not fiscally responsible. It's hard to be in relationship with people who don't live with priority. And as it is in the natural, I believe it's in, in the spiritual. It is hard to be in relationship with God when you do not make God your priority. But I'm so glad that in times when I don't make God my priority, God still chooses to make me his priority. God makes me his priority. Why do you say that, brother preacher? You find it in the text. Before I come back to Luke, or before I come back to Mark, rather, according to the, um, to the 11th chapter of John, the scripture says we find Lazarus. You know the story of Lazarus. The scripture says that, that, that word got to Jesus, that his friend Lazarus, was sick. Word got to Jesus that his friend Lazarus was sick. Don't forget the concept of priority. The scripture says that, that, that Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. The scripture says that he loved them, but yet Jesus made a decision. 
Jesus chose to prioritize that love and say, even though I love you, Lazarus, I'm going to choose to stay where I am two additional days. Friend, my brother, I don't know about you, but, but, but I would question that kind of love to where if you knew that I was sick, you chose to stay where you were. What kind of love is that to where I'm sick and the thing you decide to do is to stay where you are? The scripture does not record that Jesus was preoccupied with doing anything else. The scripture just said he chose to wait. Why did he wait, my friend? The scripture says, so that the Son of God may be glorified. I'm here to tell you on today that, that, that if it's between you and God's glory, God's glory is going to win out every single time. If it's between you and God's glory, God's glory is going to win out every single time. We see in the scripture where Jesus said, I'm going to just wait here. He didn't say what he was doing when he was waiting. He said, but well, I'm going to wait here so that God's glory may be revealed. We go down further in the text. The scripture says, that Jesus is now on his way to go and see about his friend Lazarus, the one that he said he loved. And Jesus said, we're going to go and wake Lazarus out of sleep. The disciples said, well, master, if he sleeps, he then does well. Jesus gives that death blow of reality, if you will. Jesus says, no, no, no. Let me make it plain and clear to you. Lazarus is dead. Then he makes this kind of dogmatic statement. Jesus said, and I'm glad for your sake that I was not here to the intent that you may believe. There you see that prioritization once again. You see Jesus loving this man. You see Jesus caring for this man, but yet Jesus chose to wait where he was. Jesus, Jesus, once he finally gets to the place, he's confronted by Martha, and I don't indict Martha. If Martha would have known that Jesus chose to stay where he was, first thing she said when she saw Jesus, if you would have been here. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. If you would have been here, that situation that was already bad would, have, would not have went from bad to worse. But we find ourselves yet again in this situation. My friend, my brother, I want to tell you something right now. If you didn't know it, I'll be the first to tell you. Jesus will hijack your situation in order to extract glory out of it. Jesus will hijack your situation to extract glory out of it. What you thought was all about you, you didn't know it, but Jesus was working it behind the scenes. You're just a byproduct of what he's doing behind the scenes. You and I are just byproducts of what Jesus is really doing behind the scenes. You thought that storm was really about you, but Jesus is saying, no, no, no. I'm using my prioritization to get glory out of your life. Find ourselves Jesus Jesus is at the tomb of Lazarus. At this point, he's been dead four days. They said, Jesus, by now he stinketh. Jesus said, roll away the stone. By that time, it's Mary and Martha. Jesus is there. Lazarus is in the tomb, dead four days. The Bible tells me that at that point, there are other Jews around. Somebody say other Jews. There are other people around at that point who may not have known of the power of Jesus. Once again, Jesus hijacks the situation. Jesus was supposed to be there to heal Lazarus, but yet Jesus finds an opportunity to, en to enhance the faith of those that are around. Finds an opportunity to enhance the faith of those that are around. Jesus said, Father, I know always that you hear me. Father, I know that when I pray, every time I pray, you hear me. But for those that are around, I'm saying it so that to intend that they may believe. Once again, you thought it was about you, but, but the prioritization of my Savior. Lazarus, I'm going to get to you. Don't worry about it. Martha, I told you he's going to get up again. But right now, there are some people who struggle in their faith. Right now, there are some people around who don't yet know me. So I got to use this as a teachable moment. I got to use this moment to get a bigger picture across. <laughs> it may get you frustrated, but, but, but this is bigger than you. This thing is bigger than you. This isn't all about you. Don't be so self-centered and self-aware as you go through what you go through. Half the stuff that we go through isn't even about us anyway. Tells him to roll away the stone. <clears throat> Jesus calls Lazarus by name. He gets up. He gets up bound. We know the story. Gets up bound. And then Jesus told the clothes, the grave clothes, to loose the man and let him go. 
What are you trying to say? I'm glad that I serve a Savior who takes precedent and prioritization. I, and that's not to say that that thing that you need isn't important. But like the preacher said in, in the book of Mark chapter 2, we find this man paralyzed. The four friends bring him to Jesus. So many people in the house. They have to go on top of the roof. Can you imagine the amount of effort they had to go forth for them to, one, carry the man to the house, two, bring the man upside the house on the roof and then rip the roof off. Rip the roof off. Lower the man on the inside of the house. You would think that that, that, that level of effort, that level of faith, the first thing Jesus would have did was give the man what he came to get. Oh, but Jesus said, no, 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 I'm a savior of priority. I'm a savior that prioritizes what you need. Before I touch your body, I'm going to give a touch to your soul. The question that you should ask yourself, the question that you and I should ask ourselves, same question I believe this man would have asked himself, what does it matter if he heals my body but I go to hell? What does it matter if I can walk but then I go to hell forever? That's why Jesus said that, that, that if your hand offends you, cut it off. If your eye offends thee, pluck it out. Because, you under, because then you understand that, that it's better that I go in lame than not to go in at all. Better that I go in lame than not to go in at all. When you understand this concept of prioritization, you begin to mature in God. You begin to know that, 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 that if prioritization is really functioning in my life, that, that if God is really taking me through storms in order of importance, then you understand that, that that thing that I'm going through, even though I may want to get out of it, if I get out of it right now, I'm not going to learn the lesson that he wants me to learn. If I get out of this thing right now, I'm not going to glean the message. I'm not going to extract the message that he's trying to get me to see. I don't know about you, but give me a savior that just doesn't want to, that just doesn't tell me what I want to hear. Give me somebody that tells me what I need to hear. I don't want any friends in my corner that cannot tell me the truth. I don't want any friends in my corner that cannot tell me, Kevin, that wasn't right. Consequently, I don't want a savior that is looking out for my life that doesn't give me what it really is. That can't check me when I'm wrong. That doesn't allow me to go through my storm because once I come out that fire, I will be pure gold. As I bring this thing to a close, I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians. Scripture tells us Paul was taken to, to a place and he was shown some things. He was shown some things. He, he, was, he was made privy to some things that he could not speak of. Whether in the body or out the body, Paul didn't know, but, but, but he recalled a day, he recalled a moment where he was shown some things. Paul recalled in his mind, he said, well, but, but, but so that I don't get exalted above measure, so that my head doesn't get puffed up, so that I don't think that I'm all that. According to the scripture, the Bible says that, that the Lord allowed a thorn to be put in his flesh. The Lord allowed a thorn to be put in his flesh. My Bible tells me that, that, that Paul paid, prayed, how many times? Three times. He prayed thrice that the Lord removed the thorn. What I love about it, the answer that the Lord gave him was not the answer that I believe Paul was looking to hear. Oh my goodness, my goodness, saints, I pray that you understand it. The answer that the Lord gave him was not the answer that I believe Paul was looking to hear. What do you do when you pray and God gives you an answer that you are not looking to hear? How do you respond to a God that takes prioritization in your life? How do you respond to a God when you pray? He doesn't give you the answer that you want. He's essentially telling Paul, Paul, if you're going to make it across the finish line, you're going to have to do it with this thorn in your flesh. If you're going to make it across the finish line, you're going to have to endure it with this thorn in your flesh. <laughs> I love what the Bible says. The Bible says that he prayed three times what the scripture says that, 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 that when the Lord answered Paul, he said that my grace is what? Sufficient. Another word to say sufficient is enough. My grace is enough. I'm not going to bring you out of it, but I'll give you enough grace to go through it. I'm 
not going to bring you out of it this time. You need to learn this lesson this time. But my grace will be with you. I'm afraid, I'm afraid of this generation. I'm afraid of the Jesus that this generation knows. The Jesus that I serve is not a genie and a lamp. You don't rub against him and he gives you what you want, but he gives you what you need. And at that point in time, Paul did not need to come out of it. Paul didn't need that thorn removed. What he needed was grace. He said, my grace is sufficient. My friend, my brother, if you've heard nothing else today, I pray. I pray that that you challenge your faith to mature in God. Everything he's not going to bring you out of. Everything he's not going to say, come out of it. (laughs) How about this? Sometimes he'll give you one thing when you think you need something else. But if you really trust that he's the good shepherd, and if you really trust that he's the one that's going to look out for you, then you have to believe in what he says. As our bishop says, you've got to trust the process. You've got to get to a point in your walk where every time I go through it, I'm not crying to come out. Every time I go through it, I'm not begging to come out. That prioritization, doing things in an order of importance, it doesn't mean that 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 alternative thing isn't important, but it shouldn't happen first before the other. Shouldn't happen first. Jesus dealt with first things first. What does it matter if you can walk but you go to hell? What does it matter if you get the job but you don't know the Lord? What does it matter if you get the girl but you don't know the Lord? Another way to say it is, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? What does it profit a man? How much is your soul worth? How much is your soul worth? What is it, what is it worth to you? What does it profit a man? What, what, what value can you put in it? What currency can you assign to your soul? time to be introspective would you have been okay if you were the man sick of the palsy would you have been okay with only having your sins forgiven would you have been okay if you were still unable to walk but your sins be forgiven ask yourself that question would you be okay if the only thing he would have done was just healed you of your sins would you have felt complete or would you have felt slighted Would you have felt entitled? Would you have felt bitter and frustrated? I'm glad I got a savior that doesn't get caught up in the weeds. I'm glad that I got a savior that's that's got a big picture overview of my life. He knows how much rain I can take. He knows how much sun I can take. He knows how much dirt needs to be put on me. But by the time it's all over. That's why the writer said that one man waters, another man plants. But it's God that gives the increase. Once you and I really grasp hold, once we really get it, once we really, really, really embrace it, by the time you look up, you're going to be, you're going to be perfect, wanting nothing. You're going to be in a place where you can see his face in peace. But before you can get there, yes, 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 you're going to have to go through some things, and, but it's okay because like he gave Paul grace, he forgave the man of his sins like he did Lazarus. He was able to not only raise him up, but to teach a dual lesson for those that were around. Once you and I really get that message, prioritization, you and I really will understand that priorities really do matter. God bless you in Jesus. What is your priority? Everybody has priorities. But every priority comes with process. And every process comes with a purpose. What do you want of God? All I want is to have a house on the seashore. What do you want of God? I just want a job. What is your priority? Well, Lord, if you just save me, uh, uh, save my children, mm -hmm, that's good. But you have a soul that must be saved. What is your priority? Why do you come to church? For socialization? Or to be spoken good that he's a good Christian? 
But if you're not born again of water and spirit, you have not reached the right priority. Your soul is the most important thing that you have. Your house is wonderful, the car you got, the clothes, and all those things are, are, are loners. The car, you can die, it's not going to get in the grave with you. The money you got in the bank, you may bear it, but they'll come and take it out. But what is your priority? You need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We have water. We have clothing. We have private baptism rooms. And we have a God we're willing to complete the project. You need him today. Well, I'm not quite ready. I'm not quite ready. But well, you see, your priority should be number one. How many want to go back with Jesus? How many believe that you must have the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit? We have water. We have clothing. You must be born again. This is not for everyone. This is for those that have made priority I got houses I got job I got clothes but you gotta have a living Christ on the inside we have water we have clothing and God is here to fill you with the Holy Ghost where are you where are you you got to be baptized not in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. There is a name above all names. The name Jesus. Where are you? Where are you? Get up and come on. Where is that man? that has made Christ your priority. Well, I'm, I'm not quite ready for it. I'm, I'm not quite ready for it. But, but, but I, I, when I get ready, I know where to go. My friend, there's just one problem with that. What is the problem? Well, your time is not his time. Your season is not his season. Come up and get some prayer. Get up and come on. Get up and come on. I'm talking to you, you, and you. You know you don't have it. You know you need it. Get up and come on. Come on. Get up, come on. I'm talking to you, Mama. Get up, Mama. Get up, Daddy. Come on, sister. You need a living Christ. It should be your priority. I'm talking to you. You don't have it. Well, to act like you have it and you don't have it, it makes you a hypocrite. I'm going to make them think that I got it. Give me a smile. 
But my friend, there's one thing. There's only one step between you and hell. You got to be born again. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost.
people in here.
How many know that Jesus has spoken to